This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. I'm joined by Paul Smith here in Manchester. Paul, you're a Liverpoolian. You here in Manchester? Any issues so far? <laughs> no. I've just I walked in. The first person I bumped into was Billy Graham. I haven't seen him for a while. Give him a big hug and a kiss. I had a good chat with him for 20 minutes, half an hour. He's over there now. I'm still looking at him. And it was a pleasure seeing him again. I, I, I love him and he's you know, he means a lot to me, Billy. Um, which in turn means a lot to my family as well. And he's, he's always been great with me and, and vice versa. Manchester's just football. Manchester Liverpool rivalry is just football. And it sucks. And it is like that sometimes. I was at Old Trafford on uh, Sunday at the match, literally two seats away from the away end, eh, from the home end in the away end. And it's just football at the end of the day. Manx and Scousers couldn't be any more like a they try. We're all working class. We're all, you know, we're all. Northerners were all, you know, from or family orientated, so to speak, and that, and the football gets in the way. But Manchester and Liverpool boxing, it doesn't really, it doesn't really add much. It's it's good to be up here. It's it's it, it's some city. Um, just unfortunately, them. I think I hope we're going to win the league this year. Fingers crossed. Um, Paul, away from football, Steve Clark, the man that he brings you to Manchester. What are you hoping he shows in his next outing come Saturday night? I just want him to enjoy it. He's got talent. He's got ability. He's ABA champion in the amateurs. You know, he's, he's boxed for England, he's boxed for GP. He's um, he's learning a lot with me, brother Stephen in the gym as, as, as trainer, and he just wants to progress, and he's got to progress, and that, that, that's all I want for him. Just to keep winning, keep progressing, keep looking good. If you can get the knockout, great. If not, you know, just 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 enjoy the moment, enjoy it, and keep plugging away. He's selling unbelievable amounts of tickets. He's done the most tickets for for, for, tomorrow, uh, for Saturday's show. And he did a thousand for his debut. And if the races weren't on the Grand National weekend in Liverpool, he'd have probably done a lot more for this. You know, but he, he's done probably half the amount for, for this as he did in Liverpool. Anyway, in Liverpool, he's going to be doing a thousand plus in future because people have seen him now and they know what the night was like and they enjoyed it. And they'll bring a few other people with them. And the goal with him is to try and build a good fan base similar to what Hatton had. And if he has the ability what Hatton had and wins half of what Hatton had, then it'd be a massive success and I'd be really proud of him. But He's a lovely kid, he's from a very good family and I just want to guide him the right way that, that I can, but it's not me that's working, it's him, it's him that's getting in there, it's him that's taking the shots, it's him that has to do it and if he succeeds, then we as team around him will succeed also and that's how it should be. Paul, obviously at this stage in my career, activity is the most important thing as he's so early on. Would there be a willingness, especially given how many tickets he sells, I'd imagine you'd want him on these big cards, but these big cards won't always come to Liverpool, the Manchester, these types of areas. So would there be a willingness to explore the smaller shows, the smaller venues, just to keep him active, or is it to try and keep pumping him onto these types of shows? All due respect to the small old promoters, the, 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 the life, and blood of, life and soul of boxing, sorry, the, the lifeblood of boxing, we need these type of fights, them type of shows, but... These big promoters know that if they get stay on the show, he's going to probably do a thousand tickets, or if it's in Liverpool, especially it'll be a thousand tickets. Average ticket price is probably seventy-five pounds. There's seventy-five grand worth of tickets. He's not getting seventy-five grand for the fight now. There's opponent, so you're going to make money every time he fights, and it covers a lot, a few losses off a few of the kids that you've got on the show that isn't selling tickets. It's not being malicious or nasty or petty. That's just the fact. That's how it is. Some fighters are, are ticket sellers. Some aren't. Some are ticket sellers who can't fight. Some are ticket sellers who can't fight. Some are not selling 20 tickets, but they're the best fighters on the planet. You know, that's just how it is. Um, but at the moment with Steve, I just want him busy. I want to get him fighting. I want to get him active. I want him to be regularly fighting and regularly getting work and learning his craft, improving and becoming a better fighter because the goal isn't just to be a ticket seller with him, from, certainly from me or from his trainer, Steve and my brother. It's to have him winning you know, English, British, Commonwealth, European world titles if we can and that's that's the goal. He's from the Tons of Boxing Club, he, he, as I say, ABA champion. There's no reason at all why he shouldn't. Um, Paul, just moving forward and on this main event, what are your thoughts? Jo Jordan Gill versus Alpha Barrett. It's a good fight. It's a very, very, in my opinion, evenly matched fight and it's a good fight between two good lads, two good fighters, two nice lads as well. Um, I'm siding towards Barry and I think he'll just have a little bit too much in the end, I don't think, I don't think, I can't see a stoppage as such. I can see a, a, a points win for Barrett, and that's probably what I'll go for. But it's a very good fight. It's one I'll be watching as well. Paul, just moving forward and moving on to your brothers. Obviously, I know Callum's enjoying a bit of downtime at the minute. He's got his wedding on the horizon, the stag do on the horizon. But I saw you kind of shut down any talk of a potential Anthony Yard fight over social media because it clashes with his wedding, I believe. What? 
his, what are Callum's plans? What, what's his route back towards what he hopes to be world, 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 world champion status? Honestly, I don't know. This is what I'm saying, but I don't know. Callum doesn't know. So you know for a fact that the yard doesn't know, but as idiot the trainer and managers online trying to fool people into thinking that there's negotiations going on when there isn't. So it's not my position to shut anything down as such. I just couldn't be arsed with him going on trying to fool people that there's a fight because the next thing that will come out of his mouth will be, oh, Callum Smith's rejected the fight. When he hasn't rejected any fight, he hasn't been offered the fight, he's getting married, so there's no way on earth he's fighting on June the 1st. Stop kidding the people into thinking that it is because there's genuine good boxing fans out there who are delighted to hear that that fight might happen because it's a good fight and then it won't happen and it'll be Callum that'll get the blame for it not happening because he's getting married. He was already getting married anyway. So just don't mislead the public, that's all. You know, it's a good fight and hopefully it happens eventually down the line. That's going to be my next question. Um, it's come out now that Anthony Ard is a promotional free agent. Uh, do you think we could see the pair of them cross paths and how exciting of a fight could that be? Honestly, not unless it's for the world title. Uh, I, 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 Callum's made a lot of money. He's achieved unbelievable things in boxing, great things. He's been a, he's been a world champion. He's been leading on day, releasing his great Sakhilo. He's um, He's in, well, he's... Being a world champion, he's been the number one in the division. He's got the ring magazine belt sitting on his mantelpiece. It's going to take another world title at the weight above to probably get him to, to want these fights. If it's not for the world title, the domestic fights, with all due respect, probably not going to get him up for it and apart from if there's a world title on it. That's my opinion of me, brother, but I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like We're brothers, but we're not in each other's living rooms or kitchens every morning. We don't like ring each other every five minutes to know what's going on. Callum's his own man, he's got his own career. But the only reason that why I'm talking about Callum, why I've mentioned Dennett, was just that one, i just seen one tweet get put on my page, and I thought, like, you can't be misleading people by making out like there's talks going on. And secondly, you're the kid's manager, you should know better. You know, be professional, don't be a dickhead, basically. Um, moving away from Callum, but on to Beefy, still waiting for news as to what's going on with him. Do you know anything as to where the land lies with Liam Smith? Now I did speak to him yesterday, and I've, and I've spoke to him yesterday on the air. I had a face time with him yesterday. He's, um, he's back in the gym, he's training, so hopefully his injuries are all healed up with his, with his back and everything else, and he, he's fine to get in, and fingers crossed he is, and we'll see him out. I won't say sometime soon, because again, I'm not sure what date he's going to be looking at, whether he'll catch this side to like maybe the unofficial August break, I'm not sure, but could be June, could be July, could be September, you just don't know, it just depends what he wants to do, but as I've said time and again, you know, we're all behind him, whatever he does, and... I, I do look forward to him getting back if he is. Well, he's spoken openly about wanting that trilogy fight with Chris Eubank Jr. Things have gone a bit quiet on the Eubank Jr. fight, uh, front, sorry, and where he wants to go with his career. Is it a surprise to you that maybe it's certainly not been spoken about as much as a chance for if a pair of them were to fight to have a, a unanimous winner, if you will? So now, I bumped into Chris Eubank in Dubai in the, in, in the airport. Both of us boarding the plane together. Shook his hand, give him a hug. I've got respect for him a lot. You know, I'm not going to be someone he goes for a cup of coffee with, and he's not going to be someone I go but for. I don't dislike the kids, and he is a kid. He's a young lad, and he's a good fighter. It's one apiece. Liam has openly said he'd probably pay out of his own pocket to have the, the third fight, and I think he genuinely means that. I'd love to see it happen, but it baffles me why it didn't happen straight away. Because realistically, there's no other fight for you, Bank there that's going to make him the amount of money that it will if he fights Liam. There's no other fight that he's going to take that he, he will possibly win so why not go in with someone who you've just beaten who you beat well because in our opinion in my opinion Liam obviously wasn't himself and wasn't at the races with injuries I'd love to see a third fight it's one apiece let's get a third on you know I, I would love to see it Liam desperately wants it and I don't think there's any other fight out there at the moment that Eubank can take you know if there is please name it but I don't think there is one that he can have at the meantime when he could get a third one penciled in with Liam and it'll be done just before the end of the year Paul, just some thoughts on the horizon. I do want to get your thoughts on before we wrap this up next weekend. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, what's your thoughts on it? Honestly, I'm very surprised it's still happening and I'm surprised that we've got this far down the line after seeing the state of Garcia. Um, can't see anything other than a Haney win. Haney looking really well. And listen, to be honest with you, it's not that I don't rate Ryan Garcia. He's obviously talented, but realistically, the way he's been spoken about and the things that have been said about him or the, the expectations that people had of him were always unrealistic. At the end of the day, he's got so many fundamental faults and flaws in his, in his boxing ability that someone like Haney will absolutely pick holes in him, in my opinion. So, um, Haney, and probably a stoppage, probably probably a knockout. May the 4th, two men who are familiar with 
the Smith family, Canelo Mungia. What are your thoughts on that fight? Canelo should win and should win well if, he, if he's got in the belt. But people, people are underrating and underestimating Mungia a lot. And he has done all his career and he's tough, strong, durable. Your game can fight. Good fighter, but Canelo should have enough. And the fact that Canelo's taken the fight tells me that he believes he'll have enough. I've seen a few people talk about that David Benavidez fight and some starting to suggest that he's Canelo avoiding it. Do you think that Canelo is avoiding David Benavidez? I don't know. Same Canelo who's jumped in with Bivol, the same Canelo, Canelo who, who, who took on Callum and Billy Joe in a heartbeat and, and wasn't really you know, shying away from them when they were very, very good opponents, in my opinion, pair of them. Um, I don't think so, no, but... You know what it's like, politics. If you, if, you, if you make it look like you're avoiding them, make it look like you're avoiding them, all of a sudden, not like, give me 20 million more and I'll fight them then. You, you, you're just doing the, playing the game. Maybe that's what he's doing, maybe not. I don't know. It's a question that I can't really answer, but it, it looks at the case at the moment, but I don't think that, I don't think there's, I don't think there's many boxers on the face of the planet who's scared of another boxer. This is what people say all the time, you know. Tyson Fury's not scared of Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk's not scared of Tyson Fury. There's... Mike Tyson might be another story in his AD, but there's not many fighters that are actually scared of another man. So these fights aren't happening for that, not for the fear. It, it'll be because he just doesn't fancy the fight or he doesn't fancy fighting the other Mexican because we don't know what goes on in Mexico with the politics and the things that happen over there, do we? So it's a fight I'd like to see, though. Just a couple more to end on. Um, you mentioned Dimitri Bivol earlier on. What are your thoughts on Better Behave and Bivol June the 1st? I can't see past Better Behave, but... Bivol's quality, he's, he's really, really good, he's technically very good. I just think, having seen Batebiev up close a couple of times now, I think I saw with Batebiev and I think he'll eventually, eventually get to him. But, again, you know, it's not, it's not a, a foregone conclusion by any stretch. And then just final one, we went to see Tyson Fury yesterday at a press conference. As we draw ever closer, undisputed heavyweight title fight, who comes out on top? <laughs> it's the one I don't want to answer because... It's a long one, firstly, but I've always, always, always fancied Fiore and fancied him well until I seen the Ngannou fight. And a lot depends on if that was a complete off night or if that was Fiore aging and, and becoming more sort of human and frail and showing signs of age. And if it is the case, then I can't see past Dusuk. But if it was just an off night, if it was just a terrible performance and... The fact that you're in against someone who isn't a conventional boxer, then I can't see past Fiori, and I think Fiori would be too big and too strong, but it's a big if. Paul, you know, it's a pleasure as always. I look forward to catching up with you, hopefully for a mixed grill. You can come down to Birmingham. I need to go to that railway for the mixed grill, and I've got to go. It looks unbelievable every time I see it, and I've got to go. Definitely. You've got to come down. You're more than welcome to come down. You take me there, and I'll bring you to Baby E. I'll take you on for that one.